Before we move on to more advanced game types, I thought we should do something that would transition us into them. The game I've decided we'll make this time is an Asteroids clone. We're going to save ourselves some work and just use sprites from our previous game. Up to this point I've shown you how to load in images that you may have created externally, but if we have assets from a previous project that we want to use in our current one, we can just import those directly. Right now I just have a background clouds, which is the same background we used in the last game, and I've set that up inside a room called Room Main, which is 640 by 480, speed of 30. But now I'm going to import our player sprite, so I'm going to come over to Sprites, right-click, and come down to Add Existing Sprite. And this will open up the Projects window, and if we navigate to our previous project, and open that up, show all the asset folders, and I'm going to open up Sprites, and I'm going to try and find that Sprite Squid. And this will be the sprite that we use for the player. Click OK. And so I'm going to open that up, and it retains all of the settings that we gave it in the side-scrolling game, but I want to change a few things. First of all, I'm going to change its name to Sprite Player, and I'm going to modify the mask. I'm just going to set the bounding box back to automatic, close that, and then I'm going to check precise collision checking. I also don't want the sprite pointing to the left, I want it pointing to the right. This is going to be important because the image angle is 0 degrees on the right, and up is 90, left is 180, and down is 270. We want this ship to be facing at angle 0 to begin with. So to do that, I'm just going to come to Edit Sprite, and with the image selected, I'm going to come to Transform, Mirror, Flip. And I just want to mirror it horizontally, click OK. But I also don't want it this big. I want to shrink it down just a little bit. So I'm going to come back to Transform and Stretch. I'll keep the aspect ratio, set the quality to excellent, and instead of 64 pixels, I'm going to set this to 48. So it'll be 75% the size that it currently is, 48 by 24. Click OK, and it should shrink it down, and that'll work. And then last, I want to set the origin point to the center because we want the ship to spin around its center point. So click OK, and now let's make an object from this. So create a new object, call it obj underscore player, give it the sprite player, and let's go ahead and set up our actions. First of all, in an Asteroids game, the player ship starts the game pointing upwards. So since our ship is facing to the right, we need to rotate it 90 degrees. So let's add an event, create, come over to control, set variable, and we will set image underscore angle to a value of 90. Click OK. So now it will be facing upwards as soon as it's created. And you might be thinking we could have just rotated the original sprite so it was facing upwards to begin with. And we could do that, but it's actually important for us to be able to set the image angle ourselves because we're going to use the image angle to determine the direction it is going off in. So let's rotate the sprite using the left and right keys. Let's add event keyboard left. Come to control, set variable, and we're going to set image underscore angle to a value of 10 relative. Click OK, and then we're going to duplicate this action with the keyboard right this time and we're going to change the value to negative 10. So now our ship will rotate around. Let's go ahead and make it move forward when we use the up key. So at event, keyboard, up. And we're going to come over to move and move free. The direction is going to be equal to our image underscore angle and we're going to give it a speed of 0.5 and relative. In asteroids, the ship keeps increasing speed so long as you're holding down the thrust. So if you have too much speed, it goes out of control and is harder to move around. But the way it is now, it's just going to keep increasing speed forever, which means it's going to get to a point where it's going to be so fast that it will be unplayable, and it might also cause the game to crash. So we're going to need to set an upper limit on this. So let's close this, and we're going to come back to control, and we're going to test for a variable. 
And so what we're going to test for is the variable speed with a value of 20. And so we're going to set this to less than. So our upper speed limit will be 20. So long as it is less than 20, it'll keep adding that 0.5 to its speed. Otherwise, it'll just cap out. Close that. But we don't want to maintain that speed forever. We actually want to be able to slow down if we take our finger off the key. So let's add another event, this time a step, step event. And we're going to test a variable and test to see if speed is greater than zero. And if it is, we're going to set variable speed equal to a value of minus 0.1. Set that to relative and click OK. So every step it's going to take a little bit away from our speed variable. But if we just keep going, eventually it's going to go into the negative numbers and that's going to cause all kinds of problems. So we're going to add an else action in here. And if our speed is not greater than zero, then we're just going to set our speed to a value of zero. So eventually our ship will slow down and stop. And one final thing that's very important is the ability for our player to wrap around the screen. When it goes off the top, it comes back on the bottom. When it goes off to the right, it comes back on the left and vice versa. So let's add another event, other, outside room. And then we're going to come over to the move tab. And down in the jump category, right here in the middle, is wrap screen. Drag that over. And we want the direction to be set to both directions. So click OK, and now we should be good to go. A ship will spin around, it'll move forward, and then when it goes off the screen, it'll come back on the other side. So let's close this and open our room main. Come to our objects and place the player object somewhere in the middle. Close that, and let's try it. OK, so let's spin around first. That's good. I'll move forward, and I should eventually slow down off the screen. That's not very good. Let's see our maximum speed. You might want it to go a little bit faster. I think in the original Asteroids game it does, but as soon as I take my finger off it, it'll slow us down, and eventually we stop. And we should also have the slippy slidey kind of asteroid physics as we move around. And if I just hold my course in one direction and then turn around, you can see I slow myself down and move back. There are a few more things we need to do for our ship, such as add a teleport function and, of course, the ability to fire. So we'll look at those next.